Uh, my client, what we ended up designing is a $150,000 credit to the deferred comp plan that didn't fully vest until age 65. So in that case, it cost the client $0 to, to make that award mm -hmm. uh, because it's not funded. It's, it's a promise to pay. Hi, everyone. Uh, today, we're going to continue our conversation of the critical importance of retaining your key employees and management uh, through their transition process and after the sale of your business. Uh, my name is Keith Gee, President and Founder of Osage Advisors, and welcome back to our podcast, The Ins and Outs in Selling a Business. Uh, we're very happy and fortunate to um, have Joe Gilly. Uh, founder, president of Promise Financial, uh, back with us today. Uh, to learn more about Promise, you can go to the website as at promisefinancial.com. Joel has uh, over 25 years working with larger corporations, family, close shell businesses, even some nonprofits, uh, designing strategies and comp plans to, uh, you know, to not only retain employees, reward them, and keep them engaged in, in their businesses, uh, and especially in, in times like today where finding uh, talent is, is difficult, uh, you know, using good strategies to keep people engaged is, is critical at every level, whether you're a billion dollar company or a $50 million company or a $10 million company or a $3 million nonprofit. So Joel, uh, thanks for coming back. I know you have a lot in your plate down there in the Philly area. Um, and uh, appreciate we we covered a lot uh in our last podcast on the importance of how proper planning to keep your retain your key people is uh not only critical for you during the transition period but also is a a, a non-starter for uh, buyers if they can't retain these people moving forward right you only got where you are today based on your your key people so we talked about the value investment you need to make that's only going to increase the value long term. Uh, love to hear if there's certain things that we maybe didn't touch on last episode. And if you have uh, uh, case studies or some examples of how you've worked with a few business owners to, you know, to put in a plan that um, uh, takes this doubt out of their mind. I mean, we know these people are locked in because we want them locked right. in. Right, right. Yeah, so before we, we do jump into a couple of uh, case studies, just to, to reinforce some of what we had talked about last time. So, so the, 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 um, the average business owner uh, sees two opportunities for, or two mechanisms for compensating important executives, key people. Uh, one is, you know, wheelbarrows of cash, and the other is ownership, because those are really there's a perception that those are the only two levers or two tools that they that they have. Uh, and most people understand what a 401k plan is, and that's a mechanism that that is great for the rank and file, but it's completely ineffective when it comes to targeted retention and reward of your your key employees. Um, uh, the the programs that we design, which as I said last time, the the, the legal technical term would be non-qualified deferred compensation, which is a big tent for anything from a long-term incentive plan, supplemental retirement plan, phantom stock plan, um, uh, is created specifically to be able to target just those folks that are really most crucial to the organization. And it may not just be the C-suite or those who report directly to the owner, uh, it could be the relationship manager at a right. construction company, for example, that owns the big hospital system relationship. In fact, that's a that's a, a situation we run into regularly. We have pretty good representation in the construction industry, and there'll be an announcement that that a big hospital system is building a new site or new hospital, and all of a sudden there's a feeding frenzy for the relationship manager that that is is assigned to that hospital or that university, uh, for example, uh, because the marketplace, the competitors know that that uh, that that employee is the the through line from 
the company, in this case, a construction company to the hospital, to the university, whatever it might be in terms of the transaction. Yeah, that's such a great so, point so, because uh, we did a deal a few years ago where in order to get the deal done, um, our client had a, we call in the trade, uh, you know, retention, stay bonus, right? At, you know, to the sales manager and the controller. Right. So they're, right. They're, they're down the line, but they're critical people. So the sales manager had those, you know, the, own the customer relationship. And the business owner was, you know, in it, but the sale, really the sales manager owned it. So to your point, you know, don't just look at the COO, the CFO, the CMO, uh, the CTO these days. And there's probably some people I'm missing, but you know, you may, depending on your st organizational structure, there could be, and if you're thinly managed, like, like you're talking about in construction, there are some people there that you really should be talking to as well, uh, thinking about identifying that I need, I should be doing something. Yeah. 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 So uh, oftentimes we'll have owners come to us or in a conversation and say, well, how do I identify who my key people are? And I say, um, say that, that usually the most effective and simple way is, is the old crap scale. Right. And they'll look at me quizzically and say, well, what is that? And I said, if you come into the office on Monday morning and there's an envelope on your desk with your name on it, and when you open it, it's a resignation letter and you explain, exclaim, oh, crap, what do I do now? That's a key person. <laughs> That's a great barometer. I love it. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and just to finish on that point, and we'll get back, this isn't specifically about a transition, but that very case was scenario with the, the construction company I mentioned, you know, they're going to build a, a, a 200, $300 million facility for a, a, a massive hospital system. And, and the, the relationship manager came to my client and said, Hey, I don't want to leave here, but I've got four offers from, from big, you know, your, our big competitors wanting to pay me big bonuses to go work with them. Uh, my client, what we ended up designing is a $150,000 credit to the deferred comp plan that didn't fully vest until age 65. So in that case, it cost the client $0 to, to make that award mm -hmm. uh, because it's not funded. It's, it's a promise to pay uh, in this case. I mean, we, we fund it at the corporate level, but... Uh, it's just a promise to pay. And if that guy flies the coop in the next couple of years, there's a zero cost to the client. But all of a sudden, that key person went back to these companies that were going to pay him a, a $75,000 bonus, a $25,000 bonus, whatever, and said, sorry, folks, no go. And they didn't have to wheel out the buckets of cash. The, the I'm sorry, they were wheelbarrows. They didn't right. have to, to, to wheel out the wheelbarrows of cash to compete uh, uh, with with the other organizations, so that's a really great example that 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 we, that we had of the flexibility of these kind of programs. And and again, all it did was strengthen the handcuff to the company, uh, so that this guy really could not afford to leave. So you're trying to, you know, you're, you're trying to tie him up, but you're trying to do it in a way that is mutually beneficial, right? I mean the market knows who the good people are, right? Through the trade shows, through uh, when you, you, you're bidding against another company and you continue to lose to this person, well, I'm just going to hire their salesperson, right? And right. then I, that, that, that's going to solve my problem. I'll give them a big, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know sign-on bonus, right? Right. So you, you, are, you are being proactive. Um, again, during, you know, we're talking about, ins and outs of selling a business, but eventually everybody exit, right? So you're being proactive to continue to keep your people engaged that they don't even want to look. I got a good deal here. I mean, if someone comes to me with, you know, with, with, with just a, like you, you call it wheelbarrows of cash, and that's a different story, right? That, that rarely happens. So it's a huge windfall. I'm going to give you X, I'm going to give you Y, and then I'm going to give you, you know, some phantom stock and whatever, and then you're, you may, have a negotiation with that key people. But if you continue to keep your people engaged and they're happy and people are, you know, we're creatures of habit, right? We like what we do. And if they're enjoying their work, they're enjoying their life, they have a nice balance and they know that they're, they're appreciated. 
right? Like anything else, they're appreciated. Then the likelihood uh, is significantly reduced that you get what you call that oh crap letter when you, you know, envelope when you come to the office. So, you know, maybe, and and also really like from our perspective from what we're doing, we're, you know, we're at the end of the, we're at the end of the game. We're at the, we're at the exit piece where we're there. We're engaged at, at this point, right? We're to just sell. Now, We've had clients that come to us that are like, I'm looking three or four year plan. And then we say, look, we will guide them a little bit. Like, do you talk to your state and trust attorney? Do you talk to your CFO or your accounting firm doing certain things? You know, your benefits people, your wealth manager about what, what are you going to have afterwards? So you're properly planning. But, you know, in honesty, you know, probably at the end of the line is, you know, we talk about the key people, but how do you compensate them? Do you, have you used, any compensation strategies, you know, honestly, we should probably bring that up more often. But um, because what you're saying here it holds true, especially in this economy, when you you can't find talent uh, at every level, uh, um, having everybody bought in, it, it shows a streamlined, efficient management team that's going to get the buyer excited, that's willing to increase the value to get the deal. So. What kind of what kind of, a couple of examples of some strategies that you guys implement that, um, you know, would would be uh, of interest to our audience that they may want to pick up sure. the phone and give you a call. Yeah, well, let me let me give you an interesting case study that we worked on that really integrates every part of what we've been talking about, both in this session and and the prior session when when uh, when I was on. Um, uh, we we had we were brought into a situation where. Uh, the 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 owner who was going to be selling uh, really valued as most or many do uh, the contribution of of his executive team to kind of get him to this place where there was going to be a significant payday, and he wanted to, to essentially thank. I mean, this was a pretty unique case. He wanted to thank uh, his his three key people with a reward. I'll call it for the moment uh, that was equal to about. Uh, uh, just about 25% of the, of the value of the company, which was a pretty big number. Um, and his perception and the reason we were brought in of what he was going to do was going to gift them the dollars after the transaction was done. So if you think about what the implications would be, um, the, the owner would pay uh, cap gains tax, uh, what I what I call phantom cap gains tax, because right. I'll just just let's just take a take some really round numbers where a transaction was going to be uh, the sale transaction was going to be uh, I'm going to just make up some numbers ten million dollars just because that I can use those calculations. So he wanted to take about two point five million peel off and pay to his executive team in a gift after the transaction. So he'd be paying um, um, uh, cap gains tax on, let's just say, you know, the full $10 million for simplicity. Uh, and then taking out of his pocket, a quarter of that two point or, or not a quarter of it, um, uh, what was left. So out of the, out of the 10 million, let's say there's 8 million left. He's now taking 2.5 million out of the 8 million and gifting it. Right. to his key employees. So no tax deduction mm -hmm. uh, in, in the way he was going to uh, move forward. And, and uh, in fact, it would use up some of his gift tax for his, for his heirs because of a man of, of means. And then the reality was that the IRS could always come back in and recast the gift and say, no, 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 that was compensation. Now you've mucked up the tax situation for your key people and you probably are, don't restate and recapture the tax deduction. So, so those were the financial problems with it. Then the, the, the qualitative or non-financial problems with it was, was the fact that um, the reality is that does nothing to retain the key people throughout um, the, the, with regard to the new company, the new buyer. And in fact, the opposite, you're kind of creating a, an encouragement to move on if you don't like this, the flavor of the new management, because right. I, I got my big, I got my big bucket of cash here, you know, 
with, with the the the, uh, the the clean and 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 tidy answer with that would be that it's the walk away money. There's another term for that that we won't talk about that begins with an F. So right. so the the in this situation, the buyers got wind of the intention to do this gift. Right. And they Post-closure. they absolutely got cold feet and they said, wait a minute, wait a minute, we're whoa, 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 whoa. You know, you're you're creating a situation that's that that is in our worst interest, right. even though you're trying to to do well by your key employees. So so that's what got us invited into the transaction. I mean, we're not MA folks, we don't buy sell buy and sell companies like you do. Um, but 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 we we knew this firm and and we were asked to come in and 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 create a a solution and so what we did and I'll try not to get it in the weeds as I'm apt to do but we created a <laughs> bifurcated or a two part uh, right. deferred compensation program the first part was taking the 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 dollar amount that was supposed to go to them the two point five million and put that into a deferred pool. Now, you know, you, you, the seller who wanted to bless his management team right away, um, we had to kind of get buy-in that, 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 the, that the new company was going to do something that would fit with what his intentions were. So what we settled on was a three-year vesting schedule for those dollars. And what I mean by that is the new, ma- the, the, I'm sorry, the existing management team had to stay in their seats for three years after the transaction in order to get the the two point five million dollars, and and what that did is it gave the new owners some runway yeah, to prove comfort. themselves to, right. to 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 sort of get things in place. And what we said, you know, the the the, the seller wasn't thrilled. He kind of wanted it to be quicker than that, but it was a it was a give and take. And what we ultimately said to the to the buyers, the new owners, was, "Hey, if you can't prove yourselves and, and get buy-in in a three-year period, you deserve to to have your folks take their dollars and run." Right. Then, in terms of sort of capturing the long-term reward and participation, as we talked about in our last session, we designed a second part of the deferred comp that was more like a go-forward performance bonus akin to giving them some ownership or, or essentially a phantom stock program without giving away the stock uh, that rewarded them for the ongoing, hopefully increasing performance of the company. And that um, uh, uh, bonus account, if you will, vested over a longer period of time because the new owners are interested in keeping these folks for the long term, not just for this three-year period. So it was a it was a, a a dual approach that rewarded for today, but even that was deferred for a couple of years uh, to, to give them the the the, uh, the new owners uh, time to sort of assimilate, and then a, a go forward that had a much longer vesting schedule. Now here's the cool thing: the cost for all that, because we were able to take advantage of of, of income tax deductions for the new owners reduced the cost of giving that 2.5 million by 43%. It was a high tax state, California. So being able to take advantage of the deduction reduced the cost by 43%. Uh, Then the other part of it is that that three-year vested benefit, if if the new ownership won these folks over, they could re-defer that into the long-term program. And we projected out that we would increase the key employees' ultimate benefits by 250% over them getting it and reinvesting it in a taxable environment and some sort of investment. So it was a win for the departing owner, it was a win for the new ownership, and it was a win for the existing employees, the key people, financially. And so uh, so that is a real, you know, we, we like, you know, the, the, the win, win, win transaction, right? The three legged right, stool, exactly. everything comes in threes. Well, you know, it's interesting because um, I was just about to say, it, 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 you know, sometimes um, owners are skeptical of some of these plans, not just with you know what you're doing, but other things about, 
you know, you know, what's it going to cost me? And we talked about this earlier, last episode. Well, it's really not costing; it's an investment. But the other aspect that I think gets kind of lost in the weeds sometimes is there's an income tax benefit to a lot of these things, right? You can reduce your tax taxable income by a significant portion. So the money, the money that you're allocating to, um, in this case, management retention bonuses, um, like you said, helps out the owner. The buyer is excited about it because. Uh, I got key people that they need to be with me for X amount of time. They're, you know, otherwise they're walking away from a, a big payday. And then you project out to the uh, key people, hey, if you're in here for X, Y, and Z, and they extend it, this X amount of money could be worth Y down the road. And that's not even including the agree your agreed about you know new employment agreement uh, with new ownership. I mean, what we see a lot is. You know, if it's a certainly um, a private equity buyer, is that they will you know look for you uh, key people to put they'll set up a employee stock ownership plan. And what does that mean? Well, we're going to carve out you know ten percent of the of the sales price down the road that's going to go to the employees, which is great. Which typically gets paid out after the investors get their money back first, right? So it's got you got to perform. And if you perform, there's a nice payday. If you underperform, there may, may be nothing, but that's because you didn't perform. Here, they already, they kind of they already kind of know where they're going to be at, right? So it's like, okay, I'm going to stay on. I'm going to do this. And it, it, it just creates a, an environment uh, for success. Um, I mean, you know, we, yeah. we, we, I can tell you a couple, we, we had a situation recently um, we sold the company and the owner wanted to give his key people, you know, not just like you say, the CFO and the CTO and the CMO, but he, he wrote at closing 29 payroll checks. Wow. Right. And, and anywhere from a million five down to 200. And so he, he compensated right down to the floor. Most of the people that had been with him for a long time. Right. So, and you know, that worked for him and he was happy and he, you know, he wrote those checks out, before, you know, as they closed. So he, you know, uh, got the benefit of them, but you know, he's fortunate that his CF, CFO was with him for, you know, over 10 years. His CTO was with him for marketing person was with him for over eight years. And they, um, um, they were compensated for their rewarded for their efforts. But I can tell you, in this situation, um, particularly, is that you know communication is key, and when you bring in the the, the employees, your key people, to um, let you know what you're doing, because it's always a tough call, you know, because everybody owners are close to the vest, and their family knows, maybe sometimes not, um, and most likely their attorney has an idea, possibly their CPA, but he he knew that these the two, three, two or three top people were critical. Right. And th there was no like big plan in place. Like, like you, like you, you know, uh, you know, they had some bonus plans, everything else like typical, right. But they didn't have a, he didn't have a sunk non-deferred comp plan that these guys know that's going to be there no matter what happens as long as they stay. He, he, he brought them in at, at like literally at step one of the deal when we had something because he needed them to buy into it. Right now, that's I give him a lot of credit for doing that because you don't know what's going to happen. And, you know, there's a lot of moving parts in a transaction. But from our perspective, is that I had now had three different personalities with three different goals and objectives. Right. That, so finding that right buyer mix that they all kind of like, because one was going to retire and the two were going to kind of stay on. And so. Right. We wanted to find that right buyer was the right fit that they, they bought into. If they didn't buy into, they, you know, no matter what the number was, there might not have been a deal. And we had to bring a couple of people back on a couple buyers back on several occasions over dinners, meetings, et cetera, because they had all these questions, right? The, the employees and, and employee questions are a lot different than owner questions when they're selling. Right. right? I mean, but honestly, and which is fine, which is just natural because they've been working. They're not, they have not taken that risk that the owner has over his or her life when they're selling. 
my guess is, is that if, if they had put in some of these plans with these key people early on, that it may have taken that angst, anxiety, uh, concern off the owners that my guys, are, no matter what, I want to find the right buyer because it's important to me, but my guys are, my, my, my people are locked in. Right, right. So. Yeah, and there are a couple of a couple of interesting uh, elements. One one is that uh, the plan you you mentioned taxation. You know these programs cost participants zero along the way. There's no cost to them at all. It's not until benefits are paid out. Good point. And obviously the benefit payouts are fully deductible to the new ownership. So that was an additional part of the 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 cost savings that we were able to capture that I had mentioned earlier. So it's a win, 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 win situation. That's right. That's so, right. That's right. So Joel, um, I really appreciate you being here. For audience, again, uh, Joel Gilley, founder, president of Promis Financial. Uh, they're based in the Philly area. You can uh, check out their website. Give Joel a call. It's promisfinancial.com. Uh, again, you can't get a deal done very, un you know, unlikely getting a transaction done without your key people buying in and re retention of management and key employees is paramount to a successful transaction uh, for all parties. So if you would like to talk about it, uh, learn more about it, uh, you can uh, give me a call. My name's Keith D. I'm president and founder of Osage Advisors. Uh, my phone number is 860-767- 3273 extension 1001. Uh, you can visit our website at osageadvisors.com. We post our podcast there all the time, give you some more insights into ins and outs of selling a business. Uh, or feel free to give me, shoot me an email at kdee at osageadvisors.com. Thanks again for being with us today and have a great day.